guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are gonna be doing a space lemur. I know that sounds really weird, but I wanted to do a space themed creature. And around the time when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to make, I was making just way too many dragons. So I wanted to do something very different. So I thought lemur. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so this piece was quite a bit of a challenge. For one, I really wanted to make it look realistic, but also I wanted it to look like a fantasy creature. So I needed to find a good balance with making certain tweaks to where I can make it look like an alien, but still make it look like the lemur that it's based off of. One feature that I had to change up a little bit to make it look a little bit more alien was the eyes. So I went with a very bright color glass eye for this piece, and I also went for a little bit larger than normal. Now lemurs tend to have pretty large eyes, but I did go slightly larger. Not too large to where it looked really weird, but it, it's definitely bigger than it should be. Other than that, while working on the clay face, I really wanted to keep a lot of the facial features very similar to the lemur. Because I didn't want it to look like a cat or anything weird like that, I wanted the lemurness of the face to show through. And to be honest, I did struggle quite a bit with the shape of our lemur's head because it's something very different from what I'm used to making. I tend to make a lot of dragons, more wolf type creatures and different things like that. And this face was definitely very different. The mouth being so small, the eyes being so large, and just trying to figure out where everything needed to go was a little bit different than what I'm used to, but I think I did a decent job with it. So after I laid out all the features on the face, I kind of cleaned up things here and there. I added some texture, and then I figured we could add a little bit more of a fantasy twist to the face, but not too, too much. And what I wanted to do was add some horns to the face. Now, I wasn't quite sure where I wanted these horns. At first, I kind of wanted them on top of the head, but I realized that would be kind of, I don't know, it just didn't feel like it went with the face. So I decided to put the horns on the sides of the face and all I did was I pushed in these little resin horns that I made earlier and then I pulled them out. I'm going to permanently add them later but right now I don't want them on the face when I run it through the oven. Anyways, let's get our clay head in the oven and start working on our clay feet. So I'm going to put the clay head in for like 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now with our clay feet, I'm going to have to build these off of a wire frame, that way they're nice and sturdy and we don't have to worry about a toe snapping off because the clay will be very thin around where the toes are. So I have my wire frame and I'm going to start adding clay to it. Now with my feet, I tend to make these kind of in layers where I do a little bit, bake it, and then do a little bit more, bake it, until I have everything done. Mainly because things are very easy to bump when it comes to making feet and I want to save my progress. So with this, I'm going to start by adding clay to the base of the foot where all the wires are combined. This will help make my wire frame a little bit more sturdy when we start adding more clay to it. And then I'm going to add some balls of clay to the tips of each wire for the toes. Now with this, I want the tips of my toes to be very rounded and kind of chubby. So I'm going to add a little bit more clay than what I normally do. Now if you want to work in the same way that I do with making my clay feet, you want to do your little pre-bakes here and there to save your progress, I recommend making them about 20, maybe 25 minutes at our normal baking temperature, which is the 275 Fahrenheit. And the main reason for this is you don't want to completely bake them each time you do a pre-bake. You just want to kind of make the clay a little bit more firm than normal. And the reason for this is once you get everything done, you'll want to do an entire bake. And sometimes if you do too many pre-bakes, you could actually burn your clay. So I've found that a 20 to 25 minute time frame for a pre-bake works the best. Now you do need to still be very careful with your clay because it's not completely baked. So it is still fragile. It just holds its shape a lot better. So right now I'm just trying to shape out the toes, figure out where all the little palm texture and stuff should be on the bottoms of the feet, and just trying to lay everything out. Now, like the face, I'm still trying to follow the details of a actual lemur's feet, so they are very similar to lemurs, but I am exaggerating them just a little bit. 
And like I said, once I was done sculpting everything for the feet, I'm going to put them in for a complete bake at 275 Fahrenheit for about 45 to 55 minutes. I tend to be a little bit more towards the 45 minutes with this one because they have been in the oven before, but you're perfectly fine to go all the way to 55 if you need to. And then once our clay pieces are done baking in the oven and they're completely cool to touch, we can then start on the painting. So I'm going to use a lot of color for our lemur. I'm going to be using some pinks, some cyan blues, some whites, yellows. I think there's even some green in here somewhere. But with the painting, I don't have to go into a lot of detail because most of our clay pieces are going to be furred later, but I do want to mark out where all the different colors are going to be added later. So we're mainly going to be coloring in where we're going to add a specific color of fur on the face. We're not going to add any like highlights or different details like that. I think honestly the most advanced painting thing that I did for this was just blend one color into the other which was the pink that I started out with and I blend it into a white for when we got to the end of the face. So the main face kind of blends from that dark pink to a white. And then after that, it's just trying to figure out how to add the other colors to the face that I want to work with. So I just added a little bit of yellow, some of the blue, just kind of figured out where it should go. And I had to take into account where I'm going to have the colors on the body. That way the face blends into it. So I already know where all those markings are going to be when we start on the fabric. So after I have all the markings mapped out on the face, everything is nice and clean, I let my paint dry for a little bit and then I'm going to peel off any excess paint that I got on the glass eyes. So I really don't worry too much if I get any paint on my glass eyes, mainly because the paint just peels off very easily, so you just kind of carefully clean everything. But every now and again I do work with resin eyes, and if you do the same thing, I would recommend avoiding getting paint on them because the paint just doesn't want to peel off of it as easily as if you were working with glass. And then for painting the feet, what I ended up doing was mainly just painting them a solid pink color and then adding some highlights on the bottoms of the feet, mainly because the bottoms of the feet are going to be the only thing you're going to see. We're going to be furring the tops of the feet. Looking back, the one thing that I would change about how I painted these feet was I would paint the tops of the feet a different color. I would paint it the color of the fur that I'm going to add because that's kind of why we painted the face. But with this, I just painted them the solid color and I just really didn't think about the fact that I'm going to be using a different color for the fur on the tops of them. Now not doing this really didn't affect me adding the fur to the feet too much at all. The only thing is I had to do two layers of it because the pink was peeking through just a little bit. So it would have saved me doing a second layer of fur if I had just painted it the color that the fur was going to be. Moving on, we're going to start on the sewing now. Now the pattern for the body isn't really what's complicated. It's pretty simple. It's just the sides of the body, the legs, and for the tail we don't even need a pattern for it. I'm just going to make a really long strip of fabric. Now what is going to be complicated is all the different markings that I want to add to the body. So you'll see on the pattern that I have it kind of sketched out where I want different colors and I'm going to end up having to cut this apart, my entire pattern, and cut all these different pieces for each section of the pattern. And then we're going to be sewing these together to make one piece of pattern. So it's quite a bit of sewing honestly, it took forever. Even though the tail was really simple, it's just a bunch of different stripes, it did take quite a bit of long time for that as well. And now we can do even more sewing and start sewing these pieces together. So I'm going to start with the sides of our body. So I have a left and a right. Now I want the stripes that we have on the tail to be going down the back of our lemur as well. So I made a strip of fabric for this and we're just going to be sewing the two sides onto this strip of fabric. So these three are going to be laid out like that. We're going to sew them together and then I'm going to take the fabric for the tail and we're going to sew it at the end of the body really simple. I mean, it's a lot simpler than all the different markings that we just finished sewing together. And then the next bit of sewing that I need to do before we move on to adding everything together is the legs. So each leg has an inside piece and an outside piece. These also had different markings that I wanted to add, but they were a lot easier than the main body. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the inside and outside, we're going to sandwich them together and sew them down the front. We're going to do this to the front legs and the back legs. And then once I have that sewing done, we can start assembling our art doll. So I have all of our different pieces, our clay pieces, our fabric pieces, and I even have a wire frame that I made ahead of time. 
So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the fabric that we have for the main body and tail. We're going to use our wire frame and figure out where the wires for the legs are going to need to go. And then we're going to cut some tiny holes for them. Then we can take our fabric and we can run it over the wire frame, just running all the leg wires through those holes. Then I'm going to take our clay head and we're going to add this to the wire for the neck. So I'm going to add some glue to the backing of it and then we're going to push the wire into the back of the head. Then we can take the fabric for the neck and we can start gluing it around the base of the head. So I'm going to use my fabric glue and I'm going to start gluing it all the way around. Then what we're going to do, because the fabric doesn't reach all the way around, I usually do this on purpose and make a belly piece. I'm going to take a piece of fabric that I have cut for the belly and I'm going to glue that at the very bottom of the base of the head. We're going to let all of that dry and then we can start stuffing and closing up the body and the tail. So I'm going to start at the base of the head and I'm going to keep sewing until I get all the way to the end of the tail. Now while I'm sewing I'm also stuffing as I go just because it's a lot easier than stuffing everything at once. And then once I have the body put together I'm then going to take my hair trimmer and just kind of clean everything up a little bit. I want the body fur to be a little bit shorter on the sides. This will also help with the sewing of the legs in place because the fur tends to get kind of stuck while you're sewing the legs in place and shortening it just makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to trim everything up and then I'm going to start sewing the fabric for the legs in place. I'm going to start with the front legs first and then we'll do everything pretty much the same when we get to the back legs. So I'm going to take that fabric and then I'm going to sew basically around that wire. I want the under portion of the leg to go under the wire and then the portion that would be kind of more of the shoulder blade that's going to go over the wire. You just want to have that wire enclosed when you're done sewing the legs in place. Now the wire for the legs, I tend to leave them a little bit longer than they should be because I like adjusting them after I have everything sewn into place. It gives me a better idea of how long they actually should be. So I'm going to adjust that and then I'm going to take the clay legs for the front feet and I'm going to wrap them in place on the wire frame. So I'm just going to take a smaller gauge wire, wrap everything together, and then once we have both of the front legs in place, I'm going to take the fabric for the front legs and glue the ends around the bases of the feet. And then the only thing I need to do is let that glue dry for a little bit and then we can stuff and close up the back of the legs. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to trim the fur for the legs as well. So I'm going to get those shaved up and then I'm going to move on to adding the back legs. And like I said, it's exactly the same way. They're just slightly shaped differently. So the fabric for the legs is just a little bit different. So I'm going to add the back legs to the body, shave them up, and then I'm going to move on to adding the final details. Our body is all put together and we just need to finish everything up. So I have two major details that I want to add to the face. One is obvious, we need a pair of ears. But two, I want to make our lemur look a little bit more alien, so I'm going to add some antennae. So for these, I'm going to make some pretty simple patterns. I'm going to start with the ear first, and we're going to use similar fur fabrics that are around the face. So I'm going to mainly use the pink and the white and a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to hand sew all of these pieces together. And then for the antennae, I don't want them furry like the rest of the body. So I'm going to use a shorter fur fabric. That way they're still plush, but they're not like fluffy or anything. So I sketched out my pattern on some fabric and I'm going to use my sewing machine to sew these real quick. I'm going to cut them out and then I'm going to add some wire frames to these too. That way they're poseable. So I'm just going to slide these onto some wires and then we can start gluing these and the ears in place on the face. While I'm at it, I'm also going to glue those horns in place as well. So I'm just going to attach those real quick and then we're going to start furring the face and the feet. Now the face has a bunch of different colors of fur, so I'm going to have to do this in sections. I can't just do the entire face at once. So I'm going to pick a color that I'm going to start with. I'm going to probably do the main body first, and then we'll move on to all the markings on the top of the head. So I'm going to lay out my glue on the top of the color that I want to add, and then I'm going to take my fur trimmings and add them into the glue, move them around, and let them dry. I'm going to have to do this to all of the different colors and kind of just straighten them up as I go so the lines are nice and clean. Now if you want to blend one color into another, you can kind of mix the fur trimmings a little bit and try and create a blend, but most of the colors I didn't really want to blend together. And then I did the same thing for all of the toes. I added some glue to the tops of them, laid out my fur, let everything dry. Now like I said earlier, I did have to do another coat. So if you have to do another coat of fur when you're doing fur trimmings, you need to make sure the first one has dried completely or it's going to move around when you add the other layer. So make sure it's completely dry and then do your next layer.
Okay guys, and here is our finished space lemur. I had so much fun with this, especially all the fur markings. They took absolutely forever, but they were well worth it because he's just, he's very unique. Also, I'm really glad I added these antennae. They just kind of help fill the piece a little bit more. He needed something a little bit more spacey, even though he's crazy colors. Anyways, I'm gonna have him for sale in my Etsy shop, so if anyone wants to buy him, check the links down below. I also have links to a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls, so if you're interested in trying it out, check those links out too. Now those are affiliated links, so they do help support the channel if you buy anything through them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!